Welcome everyone. Thank you for spending this hour with us. As you know, we're going to go over Snowbridge. Nick is going to give us, he's our product manager. He's going to give us a presentation on it, followed by Ada, our software engineer. She's also going to give a little bit of an in-depth tutorial as well. And we have Comb on the call for any questions that maybe the other two won't be able to answer or we can't answer. So welcome guys. Nick, you can take over. All right. Thanks, Emily, Sylvia, and Ebony said I'm Nick Product Manager, and I'm joined by my engineering colleagues. Who can take all the technical questions? I'm just a guy who makes slides. So let's kick this off with the agenda for today. Um, we'll start with a bit of introduction and background context, and like why did we build this? And then we'll jump into what Snowbridge actually is, and then we'll have a couple of demos and then Q and A. But in in reality, we'll probably stop for Q and A uh, midway as well. All right, so let's start. And we'll start with an example. So let's say that you run an e-commerce website and you want to create a flow something like this. So you have a user, user goes to your website and starts browsing around, um, checking different items that you have in your store. And then of course, all of this creates beautiful snowplow data. So you'd get all the page views and the link clicks and putting things in cart and so on and so forth. And then what you want to do is you want to have some sort of magic AI that would look at this activity and say, you know what, if we showed this user some sort of promotion, they would probably be very likely to buy something right now. So AI looks at it and within a few seconds, you deploy the promotion, user buys stuff, everyone is happy. So this is our hypothetical scenario. And I want to zoom in on this part where we have our snowplow data with all the events, and we want to somehow react to that in real time. And what are the options for that right now? So the first option would be to build something on top of Snowplow data as it is in the warehouse. So as you might know, we support BigQuery, Redshift, Snowflake, Databricks, and the data is in a very nice format in the warehouse. It's all in the same table. Um, it's easy to query, but is it really the best fit for this kind of AI flow? This would be very good if you want to train an AI model, but if you want to react to data in real time, it's not really a good fit because you would need to be polling the warehouse constantly to see if there is new activity, and then you would need to send that to the AI. So not really a good option. So the second option is you could use Snowplow data as it comes from a stream. And for that, we use either, either Amazon Kinesis, if you're running a pipeline on AWS, or you could use um, Google PubSub if you're on GCP. The problem with this is that for many organizations, they have their whole technical stack using some sort of industry standard messaging framework, like let's say Kafka. And this is not really it. So you would need to write some sort of custom connector that takes data from one of these streams and then does something with it and then sends it to Kafka. So it's a lot of manual work. So now let's set this first example aside and I'll give another use case, which is Let's say we figured this out and all of this is working perfectly. But now um, your product team comes and says, well, you know what, actually, we also want to receive the events in Amplitude or Mixpan or whatever tool they use. Um, and we also want to send to Braze and Iterable and um, 100 other tools. And so one way to achieve that would be to install additional tracking on the website and it would send data to those tools. But that's, that really kind of defeats the whole point of having Snowplow data because it is no longer the, the source of truth for everything. What you want is to have a single source of truth for the data, which is nice to validate it, et cetera, et cetera. So what you really want is to send the data to Snowplow and then from there to use the same data for all these other tools. And again, if we look at the options, which exists for this kind of thing. You could send the data to the warehouse and then you can use reverse ETL um, to send the data to those tools. 
or you could write some sort of custom connector that takes the data from a stream and then it sends to one of these tools. But in case of reverse ETL, that wouldn't allow you to see the data in real time in the tools. So let's say you're doing an A-B test and you want to really look at what is happening with that. You wouldn't be able to do that. Or with the streams, again, it's the same problem. You need to write some sort of custom connector so that it, that's just more work. So to recap, uh, we have here two scenarios. We want to send real-time Snowplow data to other streaming platforms. So we'll take Kafka as an example. And we also want to send real-time Snowplow data to analytics tools and applications or whatever other applications. And so what we've done in Snowplow BAB, and this probably is about a year old, by now uh, we've introduced our destinations catalog where, as you can see, you have the streaming platforms like Kafka or Azure Event Hubs. And then you also have Google Tag Manager server side, which essentially acts as a hub to send data to other applications. So you can add various tags to Google Tag Manager, and we send data to Google Tag Manager, and then it sends data to other applications. And this really brings us to Snowbridge. So what is Snowbridge? Snowbridge is basically the engine behind this destination catalog feature. So it's an application that takes data from uh, streams like AWS Kinesis or SQS or Google PubSub. It takes this data and then it sends it to any other stream again, like Kinesis, or so you can send, for example, from one Kinesis in one account to another Kinesis in another account or you can send from Kinesis to PubSub or from PubSub to Kinesis or from either of those to Kafka. And there's actually this thing here, which is quite interesting, which is the HTTP endpoint. So if any tool that you're considering has some sort of API where you can just send data, you could do that with Snowbridge. And that's actually how we are getting data into Google Tag Manager. But we'll show that in a moment. Okay, so why use Snowbridge? So the first thing is, again, this is kind of like a Swiss army knife of streaming. And I know I wrote here, particularly any stream to any stream, of course, as long as they are on the previous slide. But aside from giving you this flexibility of piping data from one stream to another, it also solves a lot of other common problems. So for, for instance, dealing with failures, which it does automatically and stuff like that. It has a very low latency, so it's appropriate for this type of applications that we discussed, where you want to deploy some sort of pop-up to the user within seconds. Um, and it scales horizontally to lots of transactions. So if you have huge volumes, you can just deploy multiple instances of Snowbridge, and it will take care of it. And Snowbridge is now open source, uh, so you can basically take it now and uh, implement all those kinds of use cases with it, uh, similar to what we have in Snowplow BAP. Of course, um, as always with open source, there is some assembly required. So it's kind of the IKEA version of uh, the destinations catalog. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll check the chat before we go further and see if there are any questions. Also, if you have questions now, I think this is a good moment to, to ask them. So Brian asks, how do you suggest managing master data here? Pointing the stream to amplitude would mean doing this, the exact same thing by amplitude's own event stream. There will be two sources of truth and most likely be discrepancies in metrics and data between the warehouse and amplitude. Uh, Brian, do you want to elaborate on that? Yes, of course. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so we're, we're looking at different ways of utilizing the Snowplow data uh, for maybe less data savvy uh, stakeholders. Uh, so we're looking to uh, rerouting the data into a use, more user-friendly alternative uh, in, and as a complement to the, the BI stack we already have. So my question is more like if we would reroute this to, maybe this goes a little bit off topic, but it's interesting to, to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, 
Um, so so the, what, what I'm afraid, what the effect will be is that the, the master data, which is the warehouse where the snowplow streams to, will differ from the, 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 the front end tool or whatever tool we reroute to and uh, basically create governance or conf governance issues or confusion uh, between the consumer and yeah, the see. CIO. Okay. So I, I think what I'll do is I'll try to give a short answer and then at the end we might discuss this more if we have time. So the short answer is, of course, the best thing is to just have the data in the warehouse and whatever dashboards you build, you build on top of that. However, if some of your teams or departments really insist in also using other tools, I would say the next best thing would be to get data into those tools through Snowplow as opposed to those tools collecting the data by themselves because that is even worse because then you have different, entirely different data sets, right, in different places. Um, if you are streaming data into these tools in this way, you're streaming the same data that goes into the warehouse. So aside from any potential failures in loading the data to the warehouse, it should be the same data. But we can go more in depth probably at the end. Uh, can we use Snowbridge to forward light transform data? For example, I have two events, page view, transaction, and I want to forward the transaction. Yes, that is possible. And I'll show something quite similar. So with Snowbridge, actually, we've introduced also the functionality to filter and transform the events. So you can say, I don't want everything. I just want page views. Don't want link clicks. Don't want page pings. Um, I'll actually show an example of that. And you can also transform the data. So you can fill it fields or add fields or do stuff like that. Can we have multiple instances of Snowbridge for implementing some roles to forward some kinds of event to the endpoint and then other? Colm, do you want to answer that? Uh, yeah, sure. So how you would, uh, sorry, so the question is, can we basically use Snowbridge more than once for different destinations? And you, you would just set up separate, you just have two separate Snowbridge instances consuming the same stream. So yeah, you can. You can absolutely do that. Uh, if my org is using Kafka and would like to get, get Snowplow events into Kafka, is there an advantage to using Snowplow to Kinesis PubSub Snowbridge to Kafka versus using the current um, Snowplow Kafka collector in nature? So as it stands, they are probably quite similar. Um, one of the reasons that we invested into Kafka Collector and Enricher is that we're exploring if we could have our entire stack use some sort of cloud agnostic uh, messaging framework, whether it's Kafka or RabbitMQ or something else. And uh, we are still deciding on which one to choose, but that's kind of the primary reason for these assets to exist. And let's say in the far, far future, we decide that we go with some framework that might not be Kafka. Maybe some years down the line, we decide that we don't want to maintain this. Asset. But I don't think this is happening right now, but just as an example. Um, just, whereas just with, ask, yeah. I'm sorry, didn't realize you were finished. Please finish. No, I was just going to say that Snowbridge, we are thinking of it as kind of the primary way to send stuff to streaming destinations. Whereas the existence of these Kafka assets is kind of more in line with just put in the pipeline itself running on a given uh, framework. Um, and if you notice, for example, the loaders that load to warehouses, they are not yet compatible with Kafka. So it kind of falls short of that goal of running the entire thing in Kafka. So probably what we'll end up having at the end is a messaging framework that is called agnostic that the entire pipeline runs on that might or might not be Kafka. And that would include the loaders and everything. And then we would have Snowbridge as a way to send to any framework. Hopefully that makes sense. So I think I'll stop now because we still need to go through the demos and I'll tackle the remaining questions at the end, if that's okay. All right, demo time. So I thought it would be useful to 
go over what we are actually going to demo. So we'll start with a website that has no ball tracking in it, obviously. And then the striking events will go into Snowball Micro. Now, how many people here know what Snowball Micro is? I feel it's kind of uh, shadowed by its older sibling, Snowball Mini. So essentially, Snowball Micro is the entire Snowball pipeline, but squeezed into a tiny Docker container. And uh, that happens to be useful for a demo because I can run that on my laptop. And yeah, so this, this would kind of simulate a typical uh, Snowball setup. And then just like in a real Snowball setup running in the cloud, you would get enriched data in TSV format coming out of either Kinesis or PubSub. In this case, we would just have enriched events coming out um, of the output of Micro. And then we are going to plug this into Snowbridge. Snowbridge is going to translate this to JSON. And then that would go into Kafka that is also running on my laptop. So let me show you a few things. So we have here our website, which happens to be documentation from Snowplow. And you can see that if I enable here the Snowplow data inspector, um, you would have all these different events here. So there is tracking. And then this is the Kafka UI. And I created a Snowplow topic, which at this moment is empty. OK, so now we are going to run Micro. OK, so I'm just going to go off screen and uh, click some links on the website. And this generates some events. So this is just for you to see how Micro works. So it outputs all the page views, page pings, and uh, other events like link clicks in this case. OK. And uh, actually, this is uh, fresh of the press. So there is a new version of Micro that can output this data in the standard Snowball TSV format, much like the real pipeline would. So I'll just show this. So again, we have the start. I'm going to go off screen and uh, click on a few links here. And you see that we are receiving this TSV events. OK, so now we have a very simple configuration for Snowbridge. And it just says there is a transformation. And we are going to transform the Snowplow enriched TSV data to JSON. So we'll run the same command, but this time we are going to send this to Snowbridge. So Snowbridge starts. And again, I'm going to click through stuff. And you see that we are getting all the sweet Snowplow JSON here. So at this point, um, Snowbridge is basically acting as a glorified TSV to JSON converter, which is not very interesting or um, doesn't really showcase what it can do. But uh, the next thing that we are going to configure here is to, instead of just printing all of this stuff, we are going to send it to Kafka. So for that, we are going to use um, a different configuration file. And it looks like this. So first of all, uh, we don't want all the events in Kafka. And I think this might answer a question that we had earlier about filtering the data. So here we are saying that we are going to fil filter the events by the event field, which essentially means the event type. And uh, we want to say that we only want to keep the events who have uh, which have the type page view. So we are going to get rid of all the link clicks and page pings. After that, we transform the events to JSON, just like before. And now we added this bit, which says that now instead of printing the data, we send it to Kafka. And so if you think about it, if this was running in the real cloud pipeline, we would have also the input bit. 
uh, or the source bit. And instead of being the standard input as it is here, it would be, for example, from Kinesis. So that way, uh, Snowbridge would be reading from Kinesis and sending data to Kafka. So I need to tell it to use this file. And then we are going to run the same thing again. So now you can see that it's connecting to Kafka. And once again, I'm going to go to the documentation and click some links randomly. And now we are going to go back to here and go to the Kafka UI. And once I refresh, you see that we receive the events here. And you can see that they are actual snowball events and they correspond to the pages that I clicked. So actually, let me reshare this with sound, which will be useful later. Oh, great. I might ask uh, then someone else to share the screen later because I cannot share something. So anyway, so this concludes the first demo. I'll just click through it again. And now we are going into the second demo. So in this case, we will have uh, this setup just as before. So we have the documentation website sending events into micro and that sends events into Snowbridge. Except now, instead of sending from Snowbridge to Kafka, we are going to send it to Google Tag Manager. And inside Google Tag Manager, we have a module that is called Snowpal Client. And that takes care of understanding Snowpal data and translating it into a common format that is understood by most of the Google Tag Manager tags. And we also have three tags inside Google Tag Manager for Amplitude, Braze, and Iterable, and those send the events to all these tools respectively. So now um, I think what I'll ask is if anyone has Zoom configured to share sound to share this instead of me, or maybe I'll just voice over this. Uh, that's probably the easiest option. Can you see the video? Perfect. Okay. So in this video, as I said, we are going to do pretty much the same things. We are going to run uh, micro into Snowbridge. And we also have the documentation website running. So now we are going to use a different configuration for Snowbridge. And in this configuration, we have a new target. And you are seeing that it's using the HTTP uh, module. So in this case, we are providing this with the URL for our Google Tag Manager uh, server container instance. And we are also providing this special header, which will allow us to see the events in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. And then, uh, we also have the same transformation to JSON. Okay. So this is what the preview mode looks for from Google Tag Manager. And we have these three tags um, configured there. So we have the tag for amplitude, for brace, and for iterable. And these are all the different tools that we have open. So Amplitude, Brace, and Iterable. Once again, the configuration. And now we are going to run Micro and uh, Snowbridge, just like in the previous example. So now we can go through the documentation just as I did before and uh, click some links.
And we also have this demo page where we can play a video and that will generate some um, uh, media events using our media tracker plugin. So now we can see the Google Tag Manager preview mode. And you can see on this left part that we've received all these events successfully. And uh, it also shows you the counters for the tags. So 12 items in each case. And uh, including, by the way, all the media player events and all the other events that happened. You can see also that that's from Mini, uh, from Micro, sorry. Events are sent. And now if we go to um, Amplitude, we see the same events and they were with this user ID. And for example, if we go into a page ping event, we can see that all the Snowpaw properties translated here. Um, then if we go into Brace, we could look up the user. Yep, everything there. And then if we go to the iterable events log, we'll see the same, the same thing. Okay, so I think that concludes the demo. Sorry for having to narrate this. I, I'm sure you would have preferred to hear Ada's voice, but um, it's funny because they say that live demos usually go wrong, but in this case, we had to pre-record this because of all the moving pieces and because yesterday, for some reason, Google Tag Manager was acting up, uh, which is not our problem, but unfortunate for the demo. Um, and in this case, apparently pre-recorded demos are the ones with issues and not the live ones. Um, but anyway, so if I can move past this slide, um, this is pretty much all I had and uh, all we had collectively. Uh, we'll go into in a moment into the research panel slides, or maybe I can already go into them. And in the meantime, I'll read the chat and think about the answers and you can think about the questions. Eddie, do you want to take this in the meantime? Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, yes, I mean, there's not much to say, really. Um, what we're looking for, like I say, is a product research panel. Uh, we're looking for users, both open source and BDP, uh, to help us improve the product. Um, and really, what we're hoping is that we can uh, um, collect a small subgroup of users who will be able to interact directly with them, with the product teams, get early access to new features, um, help test those features along with us. And also, if you're part of that team, every time you work with us, we'll send you something exciting, probably an Amazon voucher, but there you go. Um, and what we'd like people to do is to sign up uh, and then we will get in touch with you, ask you a couple of questions and then tell you whether we'd like you to work on this project or that project. Um, so that's our research panel. Like I say, it's open to everybody who uses Snowplow. There's the um, QR code or there is a link, snowplow.io forward slash customer hyphen research. So we'd really be interested um, if people would like to be involved in that. And if you do, please click the, one of those links. Okay, there are quite a few questions. Um, right, yeah, who wants I'll, to handle the questions? I'll start going through them and then I'll delegate to others. Okay, so for BDP users, how would this look like? So for BDP, you can go to the console and you have the destination catalog there. And you can select one of destinations, whether it's Kafka or um, Azure um, event hubs or Google Tag Manager, which acts as a hub 
for the other stuff. And then we take it from there and we assist it with the setup. Uh, can we filter on context level? We have context with information about IAB bots and robots and would like to perform filters. Colm, do you want to take this one? Uh, sure. Uh, so there is an experimental feature where, yes, you can on the open source version. It will be on the BDP version very soon. Is the duplication included in this snow bridge? Uh, no. Um, so the only compo it's only the duplication at the moment is only supported in some of the loaders. Um, it's quite a tricky problem to solve. It's on the radar, but uh, at the moment, no. In the past, we were using the analytics SDK to convert the raw TSV data output by the Kinesis stream into JSON. With Snowbridge, I assume this stuff becomes unnecessary. Yeah, so what happens is that Snowbridge actually uses the analytics SDK under the hood, the Go version of it, and it takes the TSV and it converts that to JSON using that same very SDK. So as, as I demoed, you can use it as a glorified TSV to JSON converter, but yes, you can, you can run it that way and you can plug that into, or rather plug the Kinesis stream into it and you have the JSON coming out on the other end. I just is, to that answer, yeah. sorry, Nick, uh, because it mentions less latency. It's probably faster than what you were doing before, but purely because it's the Go uh, runtime is incredibly fast. So it is still low latency. Like it, it is likely quite low latency compared. And I'm assuming you weren't using the Go Analytics SDK because it's very new. Is Avro format also provided instead of JSON? I think the answer to that is no. Yeah, no, but no, we are no. we are open to contributions though. So that's one of the big benefits of Snowbridge being open source and using language which is quite common and uh, probably easier to learn than Scala, which is what is used in most of our stack. So we are looking forward to all kinds of new use cases enabled by the community. There was also an earlier question. Can you somehow limit HTTP request rate? Uh, I can take that one if you like. Um, essentially, you would you could use filters to send less data, um, but it won't. Uh, and you can also control how how much data is being processed by how you configure the app and how you configure scaling for the app. Um, so, like if you have one instance, you can set the concurrency to be quite low, and it won't. It will cut that will kind of give you some measure of control over the amount of data but ultimately that's just going to build latency in the source stream so you kind of need a balanced solution there typically our uh, approach to that is to say that the target you're hitting needs to be scaled enough to receive the volume you need to send um because you, you, you know it's it's tricky to let latency just build up um but but filtering can you don't have to send every page ping you're receiving, for example, to the target. You can use filtering to kind of reduce the volume that's going through. This filtering based on regular expressions, is this the most performant way of working? So uh, just on that, so Colm said a few minutes ago that there is this new experimental filtering that is more advanced. And that's kind of the whole reason why this is experimental. So we started with more basic filtering. And uh, that's what we've been running with uh, with BDP and with customers. And we can confirm that this is very robust and scalable. With this one, we are kind of still testing that. And it, it is in the open source release, but I don't know if you want to comment on the performance of Regex. Yeah, it's still it's still pretty fast. Um, so it's you know it's it's a balancing act. We've tried to instrument the code to optimize as much as possible and take the work out of the regex, like so it doesn't have to be done every time to compile the regex or what or, or and, and stuff like that. Um, the, there's a convenience to regex compared to that performance cost. It's still pretty fast, but we'll obviously take feedback on the performance if, if there are issues um, but but one thing with filtering is if you put the filter first 
it will act and it'll be done with that message earlier in the process. So you get a lot of performance benefit back from filtering compared to the like small bit of extra work you have to do to use a regex to filter, basically. I'm not sure if that got two in the weeds, but I hope, hope it answered the question. Are there any more questions? Uh, feel free just to, to speak if you want, rather than actually having to write them into the uh, chat facility. When is that new version of micro out? So actually it is out already. It's just not announced yet because um, we want to update the documentation explaining how to use this shiny new features. But uh, if you want to use it, the 140 release is already there. If there aren't any more questions, one thing I would add is that on the topic of like the Avro format thing, features that people want, please be active on Discord or, or Discourse rather, or whatever other channels you have to feed back to us. We we really want to hear what you what people want in the in this kind of product. So love to hear that kind of thing. Right. If there are no more questions, um, we'd like to thank you for the turning up. We think this is a really great piece of technology. Um, yeah, we'll take note of the Avro format. Um, and if you can contribute, that would be brilliant. Um, and if there's no more questions, we'd like to thank you all very much. And um, Ebony, if you'd like to close out the meeting, that'd be great. Yes, thank you guys. Thank you for spending this hour with us. And again, thank you, Nick, Colm, and Ada as well for being here. And thank you for the questions. It's really helpful for the people that are in the call, but also when we post the video, it'll be really nice for people to also um, have those answers as well. And again, if you are open, you can scan the QR code for the Snowplow Research Panel. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks so much.